love lab-grown diamonds just because it always brings this heated debate where on one end, a lot of people have no idea what they're talking about. On the other, many want to learn about diamonds and mine diamonds and lab-grown diamonds. And overall, because of a lack of knowledge, nobody actually understands it. So we're going to delve into the world of lab-grown diamonds and all the things you should know about. So now let's talk about one of the most controversial topics in modern jewelry. Lab-grown diamonds, are they real? Are they worth it? Are they just diamonds? So let's break it down. First and foremost, yes, lab-grown diamonds are diamonds. They are chemically, physically, optically, and aesthetically completely identical to mine diamonds. The only difference is that one comes from deep beneath the Earth's surface after billions of years, while the other comes from a lab in about six to 10 weeks. So now how do you tell the difference? If we're talking about same, same, but different, well, to the naked eye, you can't. And to a 10X microscope, you can't either. So even a trained gemologist with a loop will not see the difference. Only a specialized equipment in a gem lab can detect subtle growth patterns or trace elements specific to a lab creation, which is why lab-grown diamonds are usually laser inscribed on the griddle, usually with a lab-grown or a serial number in order to ensure the transparency. So it comes down to the next question. How do you create a lab-grown diamonds? Well, first you recreate the exact same element structure basically the whole environment that you would get under the earth and the amount of years that necessitates and is required to create a diamond so in order to recreate the same environment there's two ways of doing it first is the hphd which means high pressure high temperature which mimics the earth natural condition but also CVD, which stands for chemical vapor deposition, which builds a diamond layer by layer from a gas cloud. And both create diamond atom by atom without the need for mining. So what's the appeal? First of all, people will think price because the bigger the carrot, the bigger difference you'll get and find in terms of pricing. Lab-grown diamonds used to set a piece of jewelry, like a pavage, for example, requires an incidentally the exact same amount of labor and time to set each stone next to one another, which is, in my humble opinion, why the difference in pricing is not that important. Now, if you're talking about a center stone, it's a whole other story because you can get pretty much a stone at 60% of its price from a mine diamond to a lab grown with the exact same characteristics. Now, bear in mind that price fluctuations do change on a daily, if not weekly basis. And it's really hard to say that you can get a 10X, a 50% off. Obviously, lab grown diamonds are much less costly than mine diamonds, but then at the end of the day, it all depends what you want, how you want to wear it, and the amount of creativity you'd want into your piece. Pricing is one thing, but then comes also the question of sustainability, which has come to a lot of people's mind. It is true that lab-grown diamonds require no deep earth excavation and no displacement of ecosystem. And we're not even going to get into the whole blood diamond and RJC. Oh, but although, and this is very important, not all lab-grown diamonds are created in clean labs. Some still rely on high energy processes and unsustainable power sources. But a lot of them, and quite frankly the majority, they do work with solar panels in order to avoid this extraction that requires loads of water in order to get them out of the mine. Now emotionally, and that's where the debate heats up, for some, a mine diamond symbolizes eternity and rarity, just because of the fact that it took the earth billions of years to create. But for others, what matters is the brilliance, the quality, the design, and the meaning you actually give to your stone. So here's the truth. Labgar diamonds are here to stay. From engagement rings to red carpet jewelry, they have been and they are redefining luxury, forcing them and forcing the industry to ask and wonder itself what really gives the gem its value. So whether you go for a mine diamond or a lab grown, what matters most is the choice that you make is fully informed and feels like you 
and nobody else. So if you have to sum it up, the 10 things you should remember about lab-grown diamonds is that one, they're 100% diamonds, same as crystal structure, hardness, brilliance, and sparkle as mine diamond, just grown above the ground and other underground. Two, they're made in lab, atom by atom, growing using either HPHT, which means high pressure or high temperature, or CVD, chemical vapor de deposition, and it takes about six to 10 weeks each time. Three, they obviously cost less, sometimes way less, but again, it all depends if you want tiny diamonds to set a piece of jewelry or a massive sander stone, then you'll see the real difference. Four, they're conflict-free, but at the end of the day, a lot of mine diamonds are conflict-free as well. The difference is that there is no mining involved and labs consume a lot of energy, but the real sustainability depends on that energy source. Is it solar? Is it coal? That is for the lab who will create those lab diamonds to decide. Five, the difference slash no difference. To the naked eye, you cannot tell the difference from a mine diamond and a lab grown diamond. And even expert gemologists need advanced instruments to detect growth patterns and inclusions specific to lab grown stones. And you need a specific machine to differ from one to another, and not even a 10x microscope will do. Number six, they're very often laser inscribed. Most of them are marked on the griddle of the stone with a lab grown or a certification for transparency. Seven, yes, lab grown diamonds have the exact same four C's in certification and follow the exact same rules as mine diamond grading, which means you will get the cut, the color, the clarity, and the carrot. And this apply to all exactly like natural diamonds. Mine diamond are most often graded by GIA, Gemological Institute of America, where lab-grown diamonds are also graded with another certification, which is the IGI, which both deliver official certificates on the characteristics of the stone. Number eight, Lab-grown diamonds are redefining engagement rings. And as a matter of fact, millennials and the Gen Z are embracing lab-grown diamonds as more ethical, budget-conscious, and design-forward alternative. Number nine, and it's an interesting one because designers are becoming fond of lab-grown diamonds. From red carpet to high jewelry, lab-grown diamonds are no longer fringe. They're part of the future of luxury. Javar, for example, which is a brand we'll get into shortly, is one of the best examples. But you can also find different brands like Kimai, Persing Interdi, Mazarin, Corbet, Ring Concierge, and many more who've decided to specialize in LIBGO diamonds in the last couple of years. Last but not least, the question of investment. Are you investing some good money into buying a lab grown diamond? I'm not the one to answer, and technically, and quite frankly, nobody is, because truth is, even if you buy a mine diamond, you will not make money of that stone. So just like when you purchase something with emotion, you need to completely disregard the investment side of things. You are buying a piece of jewelry that is made with something creative with a stone that makes your heart shimmer, your eyes sparkle, and that's the most important part of it. If you still have questions, please don't hesitate and I'll be delightful to create another story or another video to answer all of your concerns and questions.